Abby Flexi Capture document sets. Let's take a quick look at a project that already has a document set set up. Open up the project and we see that we've already got a working batch in place with two documents, 18 pages. We'll come back and look at that momentarily. But first, let's take a list at our document definitions. So for a mortgage application, cap, a mortgage capture application, we see pretty much what we'd expect, a number of flexi layout based document definitions that compromise a uh, number of, of documents that we want to capture data from. We also have a document set right here called the mortgage document set. And the way that that's added is by clicking new and in this wizard, you can select document set and then step through the wizard as to which, uh, which documents to include and whether or not you want a summary section. We'll come back to the summary section. Let's go ahead and look at what we've got already. So I'll open up this document set and we can see that we've got all these different document definitions that we've pointed to to include in our document set. We also have a summary group as a separate document section. And to that we've added a social security number group where we're displaying social security numbers from three different child forms in our document set. And then we're also grabbing the name from the passport and the passport number. And if we look further at this summary section social security number group, we can see that there is a comparison rule where we're actually comparing the social security number from paycheck stub forms, as well as tax returns, as well as W-2 forms. And since we're comparing social security numbers, we're doing an exact comparison. We can't do a fuzzy comparison in this case. They need to match exactly. Now, it's easy to set up such a rule and there's no real difference from a normal comparison rule in a flexi capture document definition except for the fact that you can compare documents from rather you can compare fields from different documents in a document set so that wasn't so easily done before we had document sets really really a big leap forward and at the bottom, we can see a data form specifically for the summary section. So this is to allow verification operators to quickly review the most important fields and compare data from the most important fields on from the documents within their document definitions. So I can go in here and maybe make a quick adjustment with alignment. And then I can click testing run test and basically see what the verification operator will see when they're verifying a uh, specific document set. Also keep in mind that when you set up an export in the document set, that export is going to be for all the child documents in your document set. So there's an existing export here to export data to an XLS file. And if we added a new export, let's say we just wanted to export image, image files, I'll say errors are irrelevant just for the sake of argument. And I can give it a name structure that I want. Um, and I would likely go for PDF and make the settings that I would like to keep. But what this is going to result in is all document set images. So that's also a big step forward because prior to document sets coming into FlexiCapture, you would have to write an export script that would combine images into one output PDF file. Now it's quite automatic. Coming back to our summary section here to add fields, we need to have the target fields from our document definitions have 
those fields be set to index fields. And then from the summary section, we can create field and link to an existing field. And here we'll just see those fields that happen to have been set as index fields. So if we back out of the document set, we can look at the paycheck stub, and this is just a normal document definition. And if I look at my general tab for the SSN field, we can say that this is an index field. And we can also select index field region, and that will allow us to show the image in the document set. Uh, also, it would allow us to show the image right here. So the way to do that is to simply go to your data form, right click, and select Add Field Picture, and that will display the image snippet right underneath the OCR value. So that can be really useful in general, but it can be very useful for document sets, and it just allows for a quicker review process. So we can go ahead and back out of our paycheck stub document definition. And let's go ahead and take a look at this batch. So this batch actually contains two document sets. And if we expand one document set, we can see the constituent forms. We can click on thumbnail view and take a look at what the documents actually look like. And we can resolve errors. So you can see the second mortgage document set has an error flag. If we go ahead and open it up, we see that um, social security numbers aren't matching from the paycheck stub, the tax return, and the W-2 form. And we can clearly see the problem here. This likely is the correct social security number. Um, there was some truncation here, and we don't see any result on the tax return. So I can simply use these hot fields that are part of our rule violation to quickly navigate to where I want to go. So that takes me directly to this first field. And even though I am at the document set view, I can double click here and it's going to open up that document definition. And here I can see if I zoom a lot, I can see that that was a four. And so I can feel confident, confident going back and making this value a four. Now that did not resolve our rule violation. And just to be careful and check that, you can always hit the save button. And if the rule persists, the rule violation persists, then you know you haven't resolved all the problems. So I can go back here and I've resolved this problem, but here on the social security number from the tax return, that's still a blank field. So I can double click here and I can see for whatever reason, this social security number wasn't found. So I can just rubber band that location and save. And now we see that that rule violation has disappeared. And in fact, we have no rule violations and we can, um, well, we could resolve any low confidence characters and go ahead and export.